What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel today. We're working on an air condition line. Uh, and I'll tell you a little story on the line and then how we're gonna fix it here and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, this line right here, uh, you can see the cobbled up mess I have here. Uh, this was a factory line. It didn't have this pressure sensor in it. And the story behind this was uh, the fan clutch quit working and it's controlled by the ECM on this truck and they want like $2,000 for the ECM and that was the only thing wrong with it is the circuit that operates the fan clutch uh, would not work. So I put this pressure sensor in here and uh, a temperature sensor and converted it back to the old style truck like the old style trucks used to be before they put an ECM on them and it works great. I went to Napa to have a hose made and this has been like a year ago or maybe a little over a year. They did not have the correct fittings to make this hose for me and they seemed kind of uninterested in ordering the correct fittings so I just bought some hoses and clamps and I did what I could do to make it work at the time well it has since blowed out right here on this clamp which I figured it would eventually but it's lasted over a year like this but uh, this being a custom hose now I can't just go to the dealer and buy this hose because it would just be a complete hose here with no pressure sensor in it so what I've done is I ordered the correct uh, fittings and hose and a crimp machine in order to make my own hose. I'm going to show you that over here. All right, guys, this is the, uh, the crimp tool that I bought. And these are the fittings and the hose that I ordered. Uh, this is a reduced barrier hose. I believe this is number 10 reduced barrier hose and fittings. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cutoff tool and cut those uh, uh, clamps off over there, those uh, crimps and everything, and put the new hose and the new fittings, and it should be just like a factory made hose. Uh, so I'm gonna set you guys up over here and we'll get started. Uh, I'll put a link to this tool in the description. Uh, I've got this off of Amazon. There's a couple different ones on there. I'll put a link to it uh, if you guys want to buy it through there. Uh, I'll get a few bucks off the uh, affiliate sale. Uh, anyway, so let's uh, let's get started. All right, guys, I just took a uh, cutoff tool here, a little air cutoff tool, and uh, cut this old uh, compressed fitting here off. And uh, I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and uh, try to get it off of there. Like so. Okay guys, I finally got that off of there. I damaged this fitting a little bit, cutting into it. It's got two O-rings that it's supposed to seal to. Uh, I did buy a weld on the end also, if I booger this up too bad getting it off, that I could just whack it off and weld a new end on it. Uh, but I'm gonna try it just like this for now and I'll uh, see how that works out. That's the O-rings that come off of it. I'm gonna go over here and get some new O-rings and put on there and then we'll put the hose on and the crimps. All right guys, I got the couple new o-rings on this front fitting here this is our uh, crimp collar the new piece of hose I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, uh, pag oil inside of here and on there to lubricate that o-ring before I slide it on there all right guys this is a crimp tool we got a number 10 reduced barrier 
die. And they just snap down in there like so. Not sure if I'm gonna get a get be able to get y'all up here where y'all can see and me get in there too. That's the crimp right there. We'll come in and do the same thing on the other side and then we'll put our uh, put a pressure switch in. All right guys, I got the hose slid up on there. I'm just putting both ends on, then I'm gonna cut the hose in the middle and uh, put the uh, pressure sensor in there. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get a crimp on this one. Bend that hose up just a little bit to get it get it out of the way there to be able to crimp it. Well then I'm just gonna cut our hose in two here. And uh, well, let me look and see where the best place is to put this pressure sensor at that I got here. I'm thinking somewhere right in there maybe. Maybe I'll put it like right here. All right guys, well that's that. Uh, I do want to show you guys these uh, weld on ends as well. Say if this tube here is messed up where I cut this ferrule, if you mess it up, you just whack it off here and uh, slip that over the top of it, weld around it, and then you got a new end on your uh, tube. Uh, so if you're trying to make a custom hose like I am that's got a pressure sensor in it that didn't have to start with, uh, that's the way you do that. Or if you're just making a new hose and using factory ends, uh, like these are special ends that go on the back of the compressor and on the condenser. Uh, they're not a standard end. That's the way you go about doing that. Uh, anyway, we're going to, uh, I'm going to screw the pressure sensor in, hook some gauges up on it, pull the vacuum, and see if it leaks. All right, guys, I got the vacuum pump hooked up on it here on the floor. And uh, just going to let it pull a vacuum. I uh, zip tied my line back up here, kind of the way I had it. And it looks a lot better than the mess that was on there. And uh, so far, that's what we got on the uh, vacuum. That's a good sign. And uh, we'll let it pull a vacuum, then we'll cut it off and see if it holds. Uh, thought I'd answer a couple questions about that tool. 
real quick. Uh, so I'm sure somebody's going to ask, can you uh, do hydraulic lines with that? Uh, no, it's not made to do hydraulic lines with. Uh, I'm not going to say that if you had a, uh, you know, something small at low pressure that it wouldn't work, but not recommended. Probably blow out because the crimping pressure on this is nowhere near what it is on the hydraulic uh, crimping uh, tool. Uh, those hydraulic crimpers have big uh, hydraulic pumps and you stick your hose in there and it squeezes down with a set of dies and crimps a whole lot harder and a lot more pressure than this does. Uh, so far this seems to be a handy tool. This is the, uh, the cheaper tool. Uh, the name brand tool is uh, made by Master Cool, I believe. And this is like a offshore variant of it. Uh, I didn't want to pay the extra money for the original because this is a one-time job, hopefully. Uh, I may use this in the future, but I mean, it's not going to be something I'm using every day. If you're building AC hoses every day, you may want to buy the name brand by Master Cool. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, that one there worked, worked pretty good for, for what I just did. Uh, so if you just need to build one or two hoses every now and again, uh, pretty good investment so far. Uh, so anyway, I uh, thought I'd uh, answer that. And uh, for you guys that haven't researched it, don't know anything about AC hoses, uh, the number of dies, uh, where it's got RB, uh, that's for uh, reduced barrier. There's a standard hose and a reduced barrier size hose. And uh, so these are your standard dies right here, uh, which is 12, 10, 8, and then. Uh, you got a 12 reduced barrier, a 10 reduced barrier, an 8 reduced barrier, and a 6 reduced barrier. And uh, simply what that means is the, uh, the fitting here that you crimp, the sleeve, is a smaller diameter. Uh, the fitting itself, the inside diameter, the inside diameter of the hose is the same, but the exterior where it crimps is smaller. Uh, and so the smaller, the hose is smaller, and most newer vehicles are made with a reduced barrier hose uh, that's smaller, it's more flexible. If you remember back in 70s and 80s, uh, they had those big old hoses. They were a lot bigger than what they are uh, on today's vehicles, and that's a standard hose. Uh, so this kit comes with uh, the dies to do both. And uh, what I just did was a number 10 reduced barrier hose on that high pressure right there. And. Uh, if you go to the website, I'll, I'll uh, put the website in the description that I bought these fittings from, uh, if I remember. And uh, they got a chart on there that shows uh, your, your fitting sizes. You can measure your old fittings and your old hose and uh, compare it to their chart. and It'll tell you what size fittings you need and whether it's reduced barrier or standard. You just got to do the measuring and uh, compare it to that chart. And then you can order these fittings from them, uh, which is what I did. They seem to have a lot of, a lot of strange fittings that nobody else has. Uh, now, you know, there's not a whole lot of people that I found that has like a weld on the end that you can just weld this on. You know, you can TIG weld that on and uh, push your hose up on there, crimp it, and uh, reuse your factory ends. Or if you're able to uh, cut them off with a zip wheel like I did there and pry it off, uh, you might can reuse them that way as well. Uh, it just depends on how the fitting's made, I suppose. Uh, anyway, we're going to let this uh, keep pulling a vacuum. We'll cut it off and check it. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys. The uh, the vacuum held, so we're going to go ahead and start putting some uh, putting some Freon in it and uh, see how it does. Alright guys, this is how to build an AC line. 
or not to build an AC line? How to build an AC line? How not to build an AC line? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.